Hello and welcome to the Status Report highlight for the 16th of January, 2018. It's been only a bit over two weeks into 2018, but we're already seeing some nice progress in Daisy development. Eugen is providing a quick summary of our current production, Merrick and Victor detail their ongoing work on the new player character, among other things, and Adam opens up 2018 in style with a major update regarding water courses on Chernerus. As always, Beatty closes with our community content, this time rather unsurprisingly focusing on the bygone holiday season. And as always, don't forget to check that out guys at the bottom of the status report. Links in the description below. Now with all that said, let's kick off with lead producer, Eugen. The year of Daisy is here, and the first two weeks of it are behind us. I'll be looking over the decision making and work happening during the recent ramp up, with the entire team fully focused on 0.63 experimental build delivery. We looked over the state of the game more energized after the holiday break, and came up with a selected subset of experimental features that will get us to a playable game state as soon as possible. Even with this goal of fast implementation in mind, we understand how critical it is to, after all the time with the legacy builds, get the game out in a good state, making sure that the long-standing issues that bother us all most get fixed for once. Performance, stability, cheating prevention, and functional gameplay mechanics. We are aiming for a good balance of polish and progress, but don't get me wrong, 0.63 Experimental and Beta are still going to represent an early access game, so there will be issues. On the other hand, we will work with a faster iteration speed to fix the remaining issues, to implement remaining content and features from our Beta Experimental goals, and to go through all of your valuable feedback. The past two weeks were spent on actionable items mostly within the player character feature set, I'll try and explain in more detail what we are dealing with right now. Polishing prone mechanics. Besides waiting on polished animations and player prone turns, we still need to deal with the limitations of weapon movement and ground collision. It's slick as hell though. Tweaking the new melee combat prototype. Moving to the last iteration should bring us closer to final state and give us time to balance things out, damage and speed wise. There were some changes to control scheme and targeting options. Implementation of inverse kinematics on players legs. Huge step towards a right balance of player turns. Functional system that prevents extreme zigzagging and visual fidelity of movement. Cleaning up error logs. Also looking into slimming the data and getting more order into the current state of things. We do come back regularly to clean up the mess in the logs and error messages in order to keep them in a readable state. Ladder climbing. The nearest major step in the new player movement implementation still needs more work on code, but script implementation is ready and waiting to be switched on. There is a lot more work that has been done these two weeks, but some of it is just at its very beginning. After we're done with the new player character, you'll see more stuff done on the infected side of things, and same goes for vehicles and helicopters. Once they are working and we have them in some presentable state on 0.63, you'll be the first to know. Now let's move on to lead gameplay programmer, Merrick. I'm afraid I don't have much to show you visually today, because a large amount of our work is still in progress. In any way, I still at least compiled a short list of what we're currently working on in the programming team. Client-side prediction of inventory actions. This ultimately means preventing network lags when players manage their inventory. The implementation is now done, we're fixing bugs that the change introduced in the game. Player character inverse kinematics for legs. The implementation is almost ready. Player character movement on ladders. Work is in progress, we're hoping to show some visuals in the next standards report. Central economy dynamic spawn of items around the players, a system that can spawn items like stones, sticks or mushrooms around the player. This is in a prototype stage, we need to review the prototype with our game designers. And third person camera collisions, improvements in camera collision prediction, we're happy with the implementation now, but there's more tweaking to be done during beta. I hope you're not too disappointed for now, but I believe we're getting pretty close to showing you all more visual content in the following status reports. As we're making progress towards connecting new animations for the infected, as well as character animations related to vehicle interaction, these will keep us busy in February. And now let's move on to lead animator, Victor. Hi there! The animation department is currently focused on a couple of player character features. Last week, there was a small motion capture session where we recorded a bunch of missing animations for prone, combat, ladders, as well as the first batch of unconscious state animations. Do you remember the prone gif from the previous status report? Well, we have progressed with the prototype of this new prone behavior a bit. At the moment, the player character is able to turn on his back freely with every item, as well as aim and shoot with weapons. We have only the placeholder animations implemented at this time, so it's an ideal time to start replacing them with polished ones. The melee combat has seen some iterations, and on last week's mocap session, we captured some new animations for this part of the game as well, among others, 
We recorded buttstock, bayonet, pistol and other melee attacks with firearms. We will work on these in the upcoming weeks. Our next focus will be ladders. We have adjusted the animation graph and prepared some enter-exit animations for that over the past couple of weeks, of course. We also continue on weapon animations as well as adjusting exiting vehicle animations. The player character movement has received some love as well. And the rework of turns is progressing well, with great results as you can see on screen now. We are now looking forward to the inverse kinematics on feet, which is being worked on at the moment by programmers. This will provide us with an additional set of improvements and will take care of unwanted sliding that is still present during movement. And finally, let's move on to senior map designer Adam. On screen now you can see a little preview of 0.63 water courses. Links to the full video will be in the description below of course, as well as in the status report in Adam's section. Hopefully this will make it into 0.63 for us to try out, with proper flow of water around rocks and downstream, proper realistic like. And here's what Adam has to say about it. Water courses are really important to the landscape simply because they add a sense to what we are trying to recreate. In real life, it is completely normal to go down into a valley and find at least a small stream or some kind of wet area. And like a power line, a road, a railway or even a tourist trail, finding a watercourse can help you navigate within the game world. Will you go up against the flow or down? The choice is yours. The days of the legacy renderer and the limitations we had to deal with when creating other than ocean water are long gone, and with the recent engine improvements made, namely ability to have multiple water materials per map, ability to define wave animation using the flow map, ability to have floating water moss. We can now improve the visual quality of our static water bodies and also implement water courses. We can now visually distinguish between water bodies on Chernerus. Some can be dirtier than others, while still having multiple materials for watercourses. Our current implementation considers two types of watercourse. First up we have the stream, shown on screen now, a narrow and shallow watercourse, used mostly inside small valleys. They either connect to another stream or into a small river. And next up on screen we have a small river, a wide and shallow watercourse, used in major valleys, they form multiple streams and connect to the sea. They also have a name. Also, I would like to mention the fact that there are no physical currents. Dropping an item won't make it float downhill, and given the shallow stream riverbeds, do not expect an ability to traverse the map using some kind of boat either. Most of the stream or riverbeds were designed in a way that you can traverse them without swimming, so it is up to you whether you cross and get wet, or invest some time and find a bridge or a rock to take you to the other bank. Also, these new flowing water courses will have sound effects and particle effects, so you will hear these streams running around the bend across Turnerus, and maybe see some waterfall particle effects, which of course will make the world of Daisy even more immersive and realistic than it already is. So with Turnerus being 225 square kilometers, we've noticed a lot of dry stream and riverbeds. Uh, that's a lot of work, especially in the new revamped western area. There's a massive river riverbed down there that's completely dry and surrounded by rocks. It's, uh, it's, it's, the future's looking bright for DayZ guys, navigating ourselves around Chernerus using these new rivers and streams. And that's it for this week's status support, of course. Read the status support in full yourselves for all that juicy information. And do not forget to check out the community spotlight right at the very bottom of the status report. Links are in the description below, as always. Thank you for subscribing. Don't forget to hit that like button, and I'll see you peeps next time.